stuff, right? Hello, today we're going to talk about the basics of forces. So let's begin by defining a force. A force is basically just a push or a pull. It's going to affect another object. It's going to be a vector, so we're going to need to worry about magnitude and direction. And we're going to have to worry about the units. So, we're just going to tell you the unit for um, force. As it turns out, it's called a Newton, named after Isaac Newton. It's abbreviated with a capital N. As it turns out, a Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. Once we know something more about Newton's laws, we'll figure out why that makes sense. Okay. Now we need to talk about the types of forces. There are many types of forces involved. We're going to worry about four major forces. First, here's the force of friction. So, friction resists tempted motion, or motion in general. It points parallel to the surface, and the abbreviation is force with a little subscript F. Later, when we learn more about friction, we'll have seen this formula. But for right now, don't worry about it. Another force we might encounter is the force of weight. So, the force of weight is due to gravity. It points straight down. Later, when we learn about the universal law of gravitation, we'll see that it's slightly different than that. Force of weight, F subscript W, it is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity. Keep in mind, mass is in kilograms, acceleration of gravity, meters per second squared. Another force which we care about is the normal force. Normal force is one surface pressing against another. So my hand against the wall, that would be a normal force. It pushes only. Normal forces don't end up pulling. It always points perpendicular to the surface. The abbreviation for it is F subscript N. The final force is tension. Tension is the force along a string. So the force that points along the string, it is a force that only pulls, and it points in the direction of whatever the direction the, uh, the string is uh, pulling. Keep in mind the tension anywhere along a massless string is the same. We subscript it F sub t. We know some forces. Now let's figure out how we might represent those forces. Let's talk about free body diagrams.
So the goal is to be able to represent all the forces acting on the object in a visual manner. So let's think about the steps. The first thing you need to do, of course, is draw the object. Next, you're going to draw an arrow. Each arrow is going to represent an individual force. So if you have, for instance, two tensions, you would end up drawing two arrows, one arrow to represent each tension. You're going to draw the arrow in the direction the force acts. Furthermore, you're going to show relative magnitude. It doesn't have to be exact, but big forces should probably be drawn with big arrows and smaller forces with smaller arrows. Let's take a look at an example or two. So I have a book resting on a table. What would the free body diagram of this look like? Well, first we draw the book. Yep, that's my book. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Okay, there's the spine. There are the pages. Now maybe it's more book-like. How many forces are acting? Well, think about the four forces we discussed. There is, first certainly, the force of weight acting on it because gravity is acting. So we draw the force of weight. I notice, however, the book does not fall through the table. So if it's resting on a table, there must be a force upwards on it. That force would be the normal force. Keep in mind, if the surface is along here, along that axis, it's going to be perpendicular to that and pointing upwards. Notice that the lengths of those two arrows are about the same. The reason is, they're balanced out because it's just sitting on the table. Let's push a book along a table. What would the forces acting on the book be? Well, I draw, I'll draw my book again. Think about my table. All right, what are the forces acting on it? Well, gravity. Once again, the normal force is not falling to the table. If I'm pushing it this way, it's usually difficult to push. It doesn't easily move. The heavier the book, of course, the more, it's, the more difficult it is to get it going. So there's probably friction involved. If the book is going to move that way, the force of friction would point that way. So I'd label the force of friction. Keep in mind, you do not put velocity on a force diagram. You do not put acceleration on a force diagram. All you're doing on a free body diagram is showing the forces that are acting on it. Well, I'm also giving it a push, but it's, a push isn't one of the four forces. The great thing is, is you can always make up the forces you need to. This force should be a little longer than this, because I'm going to get caused to accelerate this way. So I'm just going to label it F. Often you'll see just a random force labeled F on a problem, and that's because it's the force being applied. I can be a little more specific, and I can say subscript so push. So you can make up lots of forces that way. So there are four forces acting, one up, one down, force of friction fighting, and the force of push accelerating in this direction. Let's look at a couple more examples. Imagine I have a block on a frictionless incline, because everyone has one of these. So, I have a block on a frictionless incline, what are the forces acting? So here's my block. Hmm. Well, I have the force of weight. If weight wasn't there, it wouldn't start going down the incline. But are there any other forces acting? Well, the block doesn't fall straight down, 
In fact, there's this thing in the way, a surface. So there must be a normal. What direction does the normal point? Well, normals always point perpendicular to the surface. So this must be Fn. Keep in mind, Fn is not always exactly opposite weight. It always depends on the surfaces that are present. So this would be the free body diagram for this. Notice its direction of probable motion is this way. That direction does not show up on here. As we learn more about how to solve force problems, it will be apparent which of these forces is influencing its motion. As you might guess, it's going to be force of weight. Some part of the force of weight is causing it to go down the incline, and some part of the force of weight is pushing it into the incline. More on that later. So we have a girl hanging on two ropes. What would be the free body diagram for this? Well, let's take a look. Clearly, we have her. We have the force of weight pointing down. I also have two ropes. Force of tension. Force of tension. Notice, these two should be smaller than the force of weight individually. However, if I were to combine them, they probably should add up to roughly the force of weight here, so that the vector sum is zero. The force is up or balancing the force is down. All right, there are some basic free body diagrams. I hope you enjoyed the lecture.